Last week's discussion focused on one part of one part of speech, one of the many parts of speech we talked of nouns. Nouns in their different structures, which would mean that nouns could be in single word expressions, nouns could be in the form of a phrase, or that nouns could be structured as a clause. This time, we'll proceed with another part of speech, and it has something to do with what it can do to nouns. And so we are going to talk of any part of speech or any word or group of words capable of modifying a noun. In fact, when you look at the things around you, you tend to provide these kind of, of this kind of word, these words to the things that surround you. When you see your classmate, you uh, your mind may think of it. You might actually say it, but you'll use these words. When you encounter a, partic a particular experience, you'll once again use any of these words. The words that are made by grammar to modify nouns. And of course, if they can modify nouns, they can also modify pronouns. And yes, I'm talking of adjectives. As the label of the module suggests, we are going to talk of noun modification and in the context of expanding sentences. Why is it that nouns, are, why is it that adjectives are made for a, a sentence expansion? Modifiers may be or may not be provided to, a, to the words in a sentence. A sentence may live even if modifiers are taken out. To those who wish to have longer sentences, to those who wish to have Sentences with more features, more elements in terms of descriptions, in terms of qualities, qualifiers, we introduce the use of modifiers, to which one of them is an adjective. Last week, we tried to look for a word that we could closely associate to the word noun. And one of you, I think it was Al, last week, who told us, that the closest word that you could think of for the word noun is that it is a name. And that is true. For whatever it is that could be named, we call that a noun. And whatever the noun is, we could attribute an, ad an adjective to it. We could come up with a particular word that we could use to describe that noun. In the same way, we can use that same kind of modifying expression for a pronoun. And when we talk of adjectives, just like nouns, these adjectives could come in varying structures as well. When we were in elementary, the commonly used kind of adjective that we've been introduced to has been that single word expression. You have always been told that the word pretty is an adjective, beautiful is an adjective, big is an adjective, long, and what's common among these words is that they are all single word expressions, just like nouns. But we explored the idea that maybe these expressions can be more than just merely single word expressions. And true enough, grammar did emphasize that to us. Before we go into the, different, into the other different structures of adjectives, I think it's just proper and fitting that we dwell as well into these single word expressions. To start, we are, we are reminded that adjectives could be described, could be quality, single word adjectives could be categorized into two groups. We could have a descriptive adjective or a limiting adjective. So these are the main categories of single word adjectives. Descriptive adjectives are generally those descriptive adjectives are modifiers that express size, color, shape, etc. Your descriptive adjectives are basically the ones that tell you of quality, of texture, of 
size, of length, of shape, of color, or of whatever that basically stands for what it means to describe. Take for instance, when we say, the horse is... The horse is happy this morning. There is a word in that expression, sorry, there is a word in this sentence that provides a description of a particular feeling that the horse has for that particular morning. And that word is happy. Our adjective is happy. What kind of adjective do we have in this sentence? It is a descriptive adjective. By the way, in the context of an adjective and the word it is trying to modify, there is a particular word that we use to represent the modified word. How do we call the word described by any modifier? Not just by an adjective, but by any modifier. There's a term given to that. The word that is modified, how do we call it? Recall, recall. I mentioned this when you were in grade 8. I, read, I, read, I had written on the board. I placed it on the board. The word that is modified is what we call a... I'd like to call them. What's the word then? Correct. The head word. By simple definition, the head word is the modified word. So from time to time, I'll be mentioning the term head word, and that is in reference to the modified word. In the sentence about the horse is happy this morning, the modifier or the adjective is happy, and the head word is? What is the head word in the sentence, Kent? Audio problems. What is the head word? The horse is happy this morning. Correct. It's the word horse. By the way, I'd like you to be very careful because if you are asked of what the head word is, in the sentence that I had given earlier, do not include the. Please be reminded of this. When you are asked of the head word, just provide the noun or the pronoun. Do not include any modifier of that noun or pronoun. Because if you do, Edmodo will mark your answer wrong. And why is, why is that? What is, your, what is my justification to that? You must not include any modifier to a head word because a modifier, an adjective modifier cannot describe any other adjective. So once again, for that sentence, supposed, the supposed head word is just the word horse and not the horse. If this appears in the ST and your answer is the horse, that will be marked wrong. Why? Because the is a modifier as well, which we will have later on. Let's have another sentence. My friends took my new dog to the plaza to the plaza. What is our adjective, descriptive adjective in this sentence? I'd like to ask King. Hello, King. What is the descriptive? What is the descriptive ad? Why you are not listening, King? I'm not asking anymore. Marl, what is the descriptive adjective, Marl, in that in that statement? Again? What is the descriptive adjective, Marl? 
Marl, new dog is not a descriptive adjective. Here's the if Marl gives me this answer, then Modo, for sure his answer is definitely wrong. Why? Dog in this sentence is not a modifier. Marl, you look at the previous example, Mar. Did I include horse in the question of what the adjective is? What the descriptive adjective is? I did not. Definitely I did not because in this sentence, I was just asked, when I asked you only of the adjective, you should not include the head word. Corinne, what is our adjective, descriptive adjective in the sentence? My friends took my new dog to the plaza. Again, sorry. Correct. That's our descriptive adjective. What is our head word? Jaya. Correct. It's the word dog. Again, the answer given by Marl will not be accepted. On the question of what the adjective is, you should not include the head word. Please keep that in mind. As for the rest of the descriptive adjectives, you can just recall, you can just do your best to recall whatever it is that you could regarding your descriptions relating to size, quality, shape, taste, uh, in terms of texture, when you say smooth, rough, strong, weak, long, short, tall, uh, what else? Graceful, uh, uh, clean, dirty, tidy. All of those are your descriptive adjectives. But beyond our knowledge of descriptive, descriptive adjectives, I'd like us to be reminded of these limiting adjectives. From the word itself, they provide a limit that we could associate to a particular noun or to a particular pronoun. Still, they function as adjectives and they could be categorized in several, and uh, they could be placed in several categories. Adjectives which are limiting could be articles. We can have an article as a limiting adjective and there are only three articles that we have in grammar. You have the article a, you also have an, and the. Of these three, two are definite and the other two are indefinite articles. A and an are. Sorry. Indefinite articles. The is the definite article. Definite such that when it is used in a sentence, the, the presence of that article provides a clear pinpointing of what's actually being referred to. Take, for instance, the boy was killed. In that sentence, the word the, as paired with boy, denotes a particular reference of who was it that was killed. Though, though no name has been placed in this sentence. There's a quick and a, def and a defined reference of who that person is that was killed. Different from the sentence that goes, a boy was killed. The use of a in this sentence creates an impression of, yes, there's just this person, there was a person that was killed and it was a boy. But there was no clear reference of who that boy was. Different from how the has actually been used. The speaker who used the word the knows who it was that was really killed. The speaker who used the article a mentions that there was someone that was killed. The gender is of a masculine gender. It was a boy. But that speaker is unsure of who among the many boys who that one was that was killed. That sets the difference between a limiting article for definite 
uh, a limiting adjective for definite articles and indefinite articles. And of course, we should be reminded once again of when to use a and when to use an. We use a if the word that comes after it begins with a consonant sound. Not a consonant letter, but a consonant sound. And we use an if the word that comes after it begins with a vowel sound, not a vowel character. For instance, like this. Look at this phrase, a one-time opportunity. If our, if our uh, information of using a is on the letter that comes after it, then we should have used an in this phrase and not a. But that would make this, the phrase sound incorrect, an one-time opportunity. That doesn't make it sound right. However, it sounds better as a one-time opportunity Especially that the letter O in the word one is not sounded with a vowel sound. It is given a consonant sound. And then what about this one? The word that comes, the, that comes after the article an begins with a consonant letter, the letter H. However... Since we are not after of the form of the letter, we are rather after of the sound, listening to the word H-O-N-E-S-T as pronounced, it's pronounced as honest. And A ah is a vowel sound. And so we use the word an and not a. Ah. We don't say a ah, honest man. We rather say an honest man. Questions regarding articles. Russians, if there's none, I'll proceed to... I don't know if you could still hear me. I hope you could still hear me. Because as of this time, I cannot see any of you turning your cameras on. Are you turning your cameras on? Oh, so the problem is it's with the connection that I have here in school. How many are turning their cameras on? Are there many? Oh, many really are turning their cameras on. It's just that the connection here is quite problematic. Another limiting adjective, your demonstrative pronouns. Then called demons, demonstrative adjectives. Once demonstrative pronouns are used as adjectives, we call them demonstrative adjectives. And sometimes, I just refer to them as the demonstratives. And there are four. There are only four options that we can use. You have that. Sorry, I'd like to begin with this. That. These. And. Those. These are our only four demonstrative pronouns. For them to function as demonstrative adjectives, they have to be placed to get beside a head word. Allow me to emphasize that. Because we can, of course, use them even without a head word. And if that's the case, they don't function as demonstrative adjectives. If they are on their own, they are merely demonstrative pronouns. But if we place them beside an a head word, they become demonstrative adjectives. For example, in this sentence, this is my old book. Is there a demonstrative pronoun in this sentence? Obviously, there is. And our demonstrative pronoun is the word this. Now, is there a head word 
placed beside the pronoun, the demonstrative pronoun this, in the sentence. There's none. And so, this pronoun remains to be a demonstrative pronoun. And in fact, it functions as the subject in that sentence. There is no head word, thus it's not an adjective. When can we use this as an adjective? Take for instance. My mother made this dress for me. Is there a demonstrative pronoun? Obviously there is, and that word is this. But follow up. Here's our follow up. Is it just a mere demonstrative pronoun? To answer that, let's examine what word comes after it. There we have the word dress. And the word dress is our head word. Since there is a head word placed beside this, the demonstrative pronoun is not just a demonstrative pronoun, it becomes now a demonstrative pronoun. Adjective. I hope you can see the difference between this is my old book and my mother made this dress for me. Because again, in this is my old book, no now, no head word can be placed or can be found beside the pronoun this. In the second sentence, my mother made this dress for me, there is a head word placed after this. That head word is modified by this demonstrative pronoun, therefore the pronoun transforms into becoming a demonstrative adjective. What about the word those? I, I hope we are also reminded of their purpose and number. This singular, these plural. And that these two would connote that whatever you are referring to are just close to you. That is singular, those plural. And the ones you are referring to are far away from you. Or they are far away from the speaker. Let's use those. We need those for the party. What is our demonstrative pronoun in this sentence? I'd like to ask Nathalia. Correct. You have the word those. Follow up. What is our head word in this sentence? Chicksley. Correct. There's none. We cannot see any head word for the pronoun those, which means that the pronoun remains to be a demonstrative pronoun. Let's try to expand the sentence. Um, we need those tables. We need those tables for the party. Now we have placed a word after those. Still, what is our demonstrative pronoun? Jacob. It remains to be those. Yes, yes, Jacob. Were you about to give another word? Our demonstrative pronoun remains to be those. Now, what word comes after those? What word is it? Chelsea. Chelsea? Alessandra, what word comes after those in this sentence? Correct. You have the word tables. And take note, as that word comes after the demonstrative pronoun, and that word being a noun in itself, that word becomes a head word, which means that our pronoun, those, transforms into becoming a demonstrative adjective. Questions regarding demonstratives. Well, I hope I can make every item there.
If there's none, I'll proceed to another limiting adjective, and that has something to do with numbers. From the sheer idea of nouns being counted, numbers definitely set the limits for nouns. And you could classify numbers into two categories. You can have ordinals and cardinals. Ordinal numbers are those that tell you of order, while cardinal numbers tell you of count. How many? That's for cardinals. In what order? Whichever came first, that's for ordinals. And whatever, whatever the structure is, as long as there are numbers, they count to be limiting adjectives. For instance, I need three bags of rice. The word three is a number in itself. It is in fact an ordinal adjective. Sorry, not an ordinal adjective. It's a cardinal adjective. That cardinal adjective, which is a number, is one that provides a count of how many bags are needed by this person represented by the pronoun I. And the same goes if you want to express a rank or order of things. For instance, my second choice is this book. The word second is an ordinal adjective. For the cardinal object, ob sorry, for the cardinal adjective three, its head word is the word bags. For the ordinal adjective second, its head word is the word choice. Sir, what if there's no head word? I came in second. Will the word second here function as an adjective? Okay, let's try to have this function. It's not an adjective. Because there is an absence of in head word. Questions regarding numbers. If there's none, we proceed to another category. You have the possessive pronouns, or from time to time, I just refer to them as possessives. These are pronouns that indicate ownership or possession. In fact, there are so many of them in your list of pronouns, and they actually seek their, in, in, a, particular, in a particular case of pronouns, you could actually have them already listed out. There are three cases of pronouns, dominative, objective, and the possessive case. So you just have to remind yourselves of what are these pronouns that show ownership. And once again, the requirement is there has to be a head word placed after that possessive pronoun. For example, So look at after substituting Negative X in expression, our answer is from the, this is the original. This is the original. And it so happens that the original function. My house is their choice of abode. But in the there is a possessive pronoun in this sentence. In fact, there are two possessive pronouns in this sentence. Possessive pronoun number one indicates ownership of the house. And that is the word my. The head word of my is the word house. Possessive pronoun number two is the word there. And its head word is the word choice. These possessive pronouns then transform into becoming possessive adjectives because 
as a headward is found placed beside each of them that converts these possessive pronouns into adjectives. Why am I pointing that out? Because there are possessive pronouns which may not be placed with headwords in a sentence, yet they still show ownership. For example, I claim this project to be mine. There is a possessive pronoun in the sentence. There definitely is a possessive pronoun. That possessive pronoun is the word mine. But is this possessive pronoun a possessive adjective? It's not. That possessive adjective, so that possessive pronoun just remains to be a possessive pronoun. Not all possessive pronouns may function as possessive adjectives. The pronoun theirs. Can that function as a possessive adjective? It cannot. This building is theirs. That sentence hold a possessive, holds a possessive pronoun. And that pronoun is theirs. But is it one that functions as a possessive adjective? It's not an adjective. It's just a possessive pronoun. So if you go to the first two possessive pronouns that I gave, look at what's placed beside each of them, after each of them. There is a head word. And that's what makes them possessive adjectives. Questions regarding possessive pronouns and possessive adjectives. We can then proceed now with the indefinites or your indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns, by definition, are those pronouns that have no clear reference or of, of who or what their antecedent is. That's what makes them definite from pers different from personal pronouns. Personal pronouns are quite sure of what their antecedent or who their antecedent is. For indefinite pronouns, we actually have plural and singular indefinite pronouns. And the same thing, for that indefinite pronoun to be considered an adjective, it needs to go with a head word. Always keep that in mind. For instance, is this an ad function or is this an event function? Sorry. Let us compare this to function k of x as it is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 4x squared. Every person needs wait. Yeah. Every person needs to survive. What is our indefinite pronoun in this sentence? It's the word every. Every is a, is a singular indefinite pronoun. What is its head word? It's the word person. And that makes it an indefinite adjective. It now becomes an indefinite adjective. Sir, what if my sentence is everybody needs to survive? Unfortunately, everybody is already an indefinite pronoun in itself, which cannot function as an indefinite adjective in this sentence. It's just a pronoun. You cannot see any head word that goes together with it. Another one. Some parents. Some parents came to school. Now we have another indefinite pronoun, which is plural in number. 
And that word is some. What is the head word of that indefinite pronoun? Is the word parents. Therefore, that indefinite pronoun becomes an indefinite adjective. Just like the word all. All students are required to go to the gym. Our indefinite pronoun here is the word all. What is the head word of all? It's the word students, which makes it an indefinite adjective. Sir, can we use all without a, a, a head word? Of course. You can even do the same to the word some. You can have a sentence that goes, all were required by the principal. In this sentence, we still have an indefinite pronoun. And that indefinite pronoun is the word all. Yet, we don't have any head word. Therefore, the pronoun all remains to be an indefinite pronoun and it doesn't change into an adjective. Questions regarding those limiting adjectives so far? Questions? So we have here function H. If there is none, we will now talk of nouns which also function as adjectives. Last week, we had adjectives and we made them function as nouns. We will try to reverse the process this time, looking at how a noun can be used as an adjective, meaning it's a noun that modifies another noun. Take for instance... Nouns as adjectives. When you talk of nouns as adjectives, you may have an example that goes like this. A house tour. It could answer, it could very much answer the question, what kind of tour? See, the question on the what kind or the what type has once again been addressed and so our answer is it is the kind of tour known as a house tour. What is the adjective in this sentence? It's the word house. What is it trying to describe? The head word is the word tour. But take note, the word house originally is a noun. In fact, it, it even has a plural form which is houses. However, we made it as a term used to describe the word tour. Once again, the question of what kind of tour? And so it's a house tour. Pet store. What kind of store? Our adjective here is pet. The head word is store. What kind of store? It's a pet store. Apart from these common nouns, because these are common nouns, we can also use proper nouns. Nouns that begin in uppercase letters and that we can use them as adjectives. For instance, Japanese paper. There is a proper noun in this phrase. And that word is Japanese. And then, together with this proper noun is the head word, paper. What kind of paper? It's a Japanese paper. Since the word Japanese provides an additional, an additional, sorry, it provides a description of the kind of paper, that proper noun transforms into becoming a proper Adjective. A common expression, Hawaiian pizza. What kind of pizza? 
So we are reminded that there's a proper noun, and that's the word Hawaiian. The head word is the word pizza. Since the word Hawaiian is placed beside pizza and the word Hawaiian tries to describe the word pizza from being a proper noun, it becomes a proper adjective. Questions? Questions, questions. Are your cameras still turned on? Are you still there? Are you? I'm not sure. I just want to make sure. Kathy, is your class still there, Kathy? With cameras turned on? If I turn my camera for a while, let me try turning my camera on. Nothing happens. I thought your cameras would turn on if I turn my camera off. I'll just turn back my camera on. Okay, there. Going into another structure, don't we have any, do we have any question with single word adjectives? Sir, what about possessive nouns? Possessive nouns. Fathers. Bag. What kind of bag? Father's bag. Possessive nouns also function as adjectives. So let's try this. Let's try this. I'll type a sentence. I request you to pick out all single word adjectives. Because your ST actually works that way. Here's the thing in your ST. I'll request you to identify all single word, single word adjectives. If you identify a word that should not be included in the list, I'll deduct it from your score. If you also fail to identify a word which should have been identified, I'll also deduct it from your score. The failure to identify a word will be counted as an error. Why will I do the checking that way? Because if I do not do the checking that way, you can just list down all of the words in the sentence. If the, word, if the sentence contains 13 words and there are only 6 adjectives, you can list down all 13 words and you'll still earn the 6 points. So that you'd really be so careful on what to pick, I'll have to do the checking that way. And expect... Something's going to be like that in your QE. Uh, still, no, sir. You, you just need to underline and underline and underline. But once again, let's be let's let's try to do this sentence first. The goal is to identify all single word adjectives, just the single word adjectives. As I factored x, I can cancel x, I can cancel out x, tama po ba? Uh, common between the numerator and the denominator. So, pupunta tayo sa given na 4 minus x squared, 4 over 3. Ito yung lalabas na equation natin. Pag sinimplify natin yan, looking 4 over 3 minus x squared, there, when we went to the nearest hospital, our neighbors noticed that we were riding in an expensive car which was just bought last year. There. Pick out all single word adjectives, just the single word adjectives. Substitution. We have 4 times negative x. Minus negative x to the power of 3. Let's start. Ken, give me the first. Let's do this in the right order, people, right? So that you, you will not be jumping from one word to another. Let's uh, give me, Ken, the first single word adjective in this sentence. Negative x times 4 is negative 4x. Minus negative x times 3 is negative The first one that you should find. What is it, Ken? 
Correct. The first single word adjective is the article the. Give me the second single word adjective, Kathy. Nearest, correct. Where can we find these two? We could see them in the dependent clause. The first dependent clause. When we went to the nearest hospital. We will not identify when as an adjective because it's not. We here is a pronoun, a personal pronoun. It cannot function as an adjective in this clause. When is a verb, two is a preposition. Hospital is not an adjective. It is rather the head word of the words the and nearest. Let's continue. Jacob, give me the third. Yeah, give me the third adjective, single word adjective. R, correct. Next, or the fourth single word adjective, give. Is Kim still here? Hello, Kim. Correct. You have Anne. Kim has already typed it in. Anne is the fourth single word adjective. What's the fifth single word adjective, Corinne? I think this will be easy then. Expensive, correct. What's. Do we still have another adjective? Is there still another adjective? There's one more. And what is that word? Al. Correct. Sorry, the spelling is incorrect. There. So that sentence contains six single word adjectives. The, nearest, our, and, expensive, and last. If in the ST you failed to give me six, deductions will be charged. If you turn out giving me more than six when there were just only six, deductions will be charged. I want you to be very sure. I want you to be certain of what to pick as an answer for any of the sentences that you'll meet in the ST. Questions so far? Why nothing was seen in the camera remains to be very mysterious. What are the adjectives in this sentence? Right away, give me the answers. What are the adjectives in this sentence? I'd like to ask them. Uh, remains to be very mysterious. The end. Correct. Why did I give this kind of example? There are only two answers, the and mysterious. Sir, what about very? Yes, very is a modifier. But very here is modifying mysterious. A modifier to an adjective is not an adjective. That's what we call an adverb. If you include very. Sir, what if my answer, sir, is the and very mysterious. I will acknowledge your answer to be composed of three words. The, very, and mysterious. In a right minus wrong basis, that would mean that your score is one point. Because you got the and mysterious right. But you included very. So right minus wrong, two points are right, one point is incorrect. You'll earn one point for that sentence. When supposedly you could have earned two points. 
Sir, what if I included in the and then I place very mysterious? Uh, you should know. You will not anymore be earning any point there. What you'll earn is a zero. Okay, so because I'll consider in as a separate word. The is a different one. Very as well as mysterious. Two are correct. Two are incorrect. That would mean a two minus two. And that is going to lead to a zero. This afternoon at 4.30 to 5, I'd like us to have a continuation of phrase adjectives so that at least on Thursday, we can just have clause modifiers. So Values Ed will have its discussion on Thursday afternoon at 4.30 to 5. Do you have a class at 3.30 to 4.30? I wait, you do, TLE. So I'll just have to wait for you at 4.30 to 5 then. For this morning, that will be all. If there are questions with single word adjectives, you can raise them this afternoon. But most importantly, we shall proceed with phrase modifiers. And for that, that will be all. Goodbye and thank you. Grade 10.